So now that we've looked at namespaces and thought about what namespaces are for and looked at how to construct a namespace, at least in the abstract, let's look at the Dublin Core namespace. The policies for constructing a namespace building on Dublin Core are laid out in this document, the namespace policy. And at the top of this page, we have some credits and a very nice glossary. And then we get to this section, namespace URIs. So again, a URI is intended to be a unique identifier. Let's only look at the one at the top of the list for the sake of, of this example. So the DCMI namespace URI for all properties, classes, and encoding schemes is this. Now, PURL stands for persistent URL, and a persistent URL is the same as a regular URL, except that it's supposed to be persistent over time. The idea is that there is a system in place where that's supposed to ensure that the content at a particular URL remains at that URL for the long haul. And I think you can see why that would be important for a namespace because um, at many URLs, the content changes over time. Sometimes you even get 404 errors where things just vanish completely. That would obviously be a real problem for a namespace. It would make it impossible to build new systems, new schemas on top of a namespace if you never know where to point to to go get those semantic definitions. So that persistent URL resolves to this page the metadata terms, DCMI metadata terms. So let us just look at the elements, the 15 Dublin Core elements, which of course we have looked at before. So let's just look at the one at the top of the list again, because it's convenient, contributor. The URI for contributor is this persistent URL. Let me show you that it is a persistent URL. Persistent URL. That persistent URL points to this spot on this web page. What that is saying is that this spot right here, this block of text, is the definition, the canonical definition for the contributor element. Right? We have label, definition, etc. Type of term, property. Think back to the abstract model and property, which is analogous to element. The contributor element is being defined as an instance of the property type. And then we have a little bit of version control. This is version 006, the sixth version of the contributor element. Obviously, this page is human readable. We're reading it right now. Obviously, it's human readable. But embedded in this page is code that points any algorithm that's looking for it to more data about the Dublin Core namespace. So let us look at the source code for this page. The first thing that you should notice is this RDF declaration right here. Contributor has the property is defined by and this persistent URL is where that definition happens, where that definition lives. This is an RDF declaration, and RDF declaration is defined by is pointing to that persistent URL. That persistent URL is, again, this spot on this web page, right? Again, 
the RDF declaration is saying this spot on this web page is the formal definition for this object, for this element. Then we scroll down a little bit and we have another RDF declaration. Type of term, remember, type of term was given as property. So RDF type is formally being defined as property and this is where property is defined. We have this document called 22 RDF syntax NS. NS of course stands for namespace. I took the liberty before starting to record this of downloading that file and it's this right here. Now this file is obviously written in RDF RDF is plastered all over this document. It's a bit of a dead giveaway. And what we want to look at right now is this block right here. RDF property. And what we have is a bunch of characteristics of property defined in RDF. So what's going on here is finally the end of the chain is this RDF document in which property and the semantics of property are defined and then contributor and all of the 15 elements of Dublin Core are being declared as instances of the property type and so they inherit all of these characteristics, all of the semantics of property.